Hey, what's going on guys? You got Ellie here, you got Morgan. We're from Movie Files and we are here to give you guys our thoughts and our review for the movie Insidious, The Last Key, the fourth entry in the Insidious franchise. So is it scary? Does it does it beat the other three movies in the franchise? Is it the best movie in the franchise? Well, you guys are about to find out. Alrighty guys, so if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, for those that are already subscribed, thank you for tuning in. And for the newcomers, thank you guys for watching. But uh, Insidious, the, the last key is the fourth entry in the franchise. And um, it comes with uh, some some new things and some things that didn't work too well, but we'll get into that. So for you guys that are new to our video reviews, we like to keep it as spoiler free as possible. And if something slips up, we'll definitely give you guys a heads up and we'll put a spoiler warning in there if we feel like it's spoiler territory. But we like to touch on the story, uh, the performances. It's a horror film. Is it scary? We'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about our overall thoughts on the franchise and then we'll wrap up with our score. So with that, you know, just kind of go into the story based off the trailers and the synopsis. This movie is heavily focused on Elise, her background, mm -hmm. her her backstory, her house being haunted. She gets a call from a um, from a gentleman saying the house has some more crazy activity. So Elise being Elise, she has to jump into action. So keeping it spoiler free uh, and touching on the positive and negatives, what did you think about just the general story? So um, I do think like with the beginning of the, in the beginning of the movie, it touches on her childhood mm -hmm. um, and it started to build like some momentum for me, kind of like reeled me in, um, seemed to be interesting, but then I just feel like it kind of fell flat. Um, so like Elliot says, it, it said it really just focuses on um, the house she grew up in and mm -hmm. kind of it brings her, brings her back in her adulthood. Um, so yeah, I would definitely say that, uh, it just kind of fell flat for me. There was nothing really new in this movie. Um, wasn't scary. I was really like kind of hoping to get a few jumps in there, but there really weren't, um, any for me. So, yeah, I mean, and just kind of going on the story more, like Morgan said, I thought one of the positive, uh, uh, highlight of the film was the actual prologue, the first 15, 20 minutes of the film mm -hmm. where we kind of get a, the backstory of Elise in her house and her relationship with her family. That was pretty, I thought it was actually the strongest part of any Insidious fran uh, movie as far as the pro the beginning of the movie. It really kind of built some momentum and you thought you were going to get into a certain uh, element. And they touched on that throughout the film. Her background, her backstory was sprinkled throughout the film, got flashbacks. But I thought, and that's really kind of where the, the story kind of went weaker for me, is they really kind of tried to shoo in her backstory and then throw in these new elements and bring in some new characters in, some older characters, and it just it didn't mix well, yeah. honestly, which kind of leads into the the performances. I think that's where really the movie kind of falls short. Now, keep in mind, the series isn't these Oscar-winning performances. You know, you got Rose Byrne in the first, uh, uh, first two movies, Patrick Wilson, some really good actors. I'm a fan of both of the actors. And you had some moments throughout the first two Insidious with them in particular that in particular with Patrick Wilson, the second one, kind of being the evil version of himself. But mm -hmm. I think this movie just had some some cringeworthy acting, honestly. Yeah. And, and at this point, this is the fourth movie of the franchise. You kind of know what you're getting into when you get a movie in January. But I think really the performances were just kind of yeah, just... I yeah. agree. I think there was just like some really cheesy moments, um, kind of like reminiscent of like a Lifetime movie at some points. And mm. it just it didn't work. So Yeah, I mean, and it's... You get some, obviously we got Elise, this is her fourth time in the film. We also got the, the ghost crew guys, which we'll talk about their dynamic in this one. But, you know, other than that, you got these new characters, and I thought from, and not spoiling anything, but you get some of her, her family was in it, uh, minus the, the beginning where you see her dad and her mom, but you meet some other family members later on in the movie, and I think that's where the movie kind of just halts, where you get some new characters where, the, like I said, the acting and the performances just weren't too believable. Uh, mm -hmm. The tension was really was missing, and I think it was the biggest things, which kind of leads into the scare factor of this review. Is it scary? No. Yeah. And I think it suffers from... They really tried, again, like I was talking about the story, they really tried to throw and inject this background at least and throw in these new characters, and they really kind of miss the element of, of surprise and, and, and scare factor. I mean, like I said, there's a couple jump scares, but it's really yeah. nothing too effective. Yeah. No, no, no tension. Yeah, and it just, it falls flat on all um, parts. I know you're talking about the scare factor and all that, but even with her, her story, it just wasn't strong enough. There yeah. wasn't anything that, like, was strong enough to hold itself together, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, and like I said, you get these little flashbacks and, and see her fa family dynamic. And those were kind of, you felt bad for the character, Elise, and her family. 
But and they still that, didn't like clearly define. Yeah, there is, and like I said, we don't want to spoil anything. But just going back to the story, there's a lot of plot holes in this film. Some things yeah. that just kind of don't work out. Ultimately, some some subplots that could have just been completely eliminated. Some characters that could have been out of the yeah. movie. They do. They try to do some new things with some new techniques, with kind of some different sound ambient. With the crew, they're trying to do some things. Ambient, with some, yeah, yeah they tried to do some new things, but it just didn't really work. And also, too, something that didn't really work well was the comedy. Yeah. You know the the I can't think of what they call themselves, but Specs and the other guy. They're in all four movies. They're not funny to me. And this no. film really was not funny. I mean, the first Insidious, when you meet them, you see they had this weird dynamic. This when they were trying too hard to be funny, yeah. and it fell flat. Like there's maybe one. Yeah. joke that landed but they had a lot of them that just felt oh, just hit the yeah. ground and uh, yeah it was terrible and it was you almost I mean. like they wanted you to feel that <laughs> yeah it was, it was weird the comedy strange. in this film was just weird and we'll kind of finish up with just our overall thoughts on the franchise here this is the fourth film uh i'll say personally we we rewatched in cities one and two and they haven't aged that well but at least the first one has some creepiness has some mm-hmm. really effective jump scares second one was okay third one i did not like at all I'll say this one, the fourth one's better than the third, but that's not saying much because the third wasn't that great. Um, and I think the franchise, as, as you guys know with Blumhouse, these movies cost maybe five, ten million at the most. I think this movie was ten million. It's going to make its budget back this weekend. I think it's already at thirty million this weekend. It beat Star Wars uh, for the box office results for the second for the for its first week. So. I mean, it's called The Last Key, but I mean, there's a particular part in the story that you guys would catch up on. They can obviously take this to a fifth chapter if yeah. they want to. I don't think they need to, but yeah. what do you think about yeah, the franchise? Yeah, same. I mean, I was telling Elliot, it reminds me a little bit of like Paranormal Activity, Asia, yeah. where they just kept making them because they, they were making money, and then too. now like nobody even talks about it. I remember that was such like a highly talked about movie, and it's just kind of I mean, the audience is there. We dust. saw it, and like I said, it's number two in the box. It made $29 million, a little under $30 million this opening weekend, so I mean, there's a there's yeah. an audience out it's there It's just, for, it. for me, it was like, you know when you're a kid and you just like loved a movie and then you grow up and you like find the movie at some store, mm-hmm. blockbuster that don't exist, but you know, you find it somewhere and then you watch it again and you're so excited and then it's just terrible. That's how Insidious was for me. Like I remember Insidious, the first one, I really liked it. Like it I remember different. being the genuinely 2011, scared. It was a new, yeah. Um, but it just it hasn't aged well. But I, I do think for what it was in 2011, it was probably a good movie mm-hmm. um, at the time. But this, it's just like it's washed up. I think our standards are getting a little bit higher for these horror films. Like Morgan said, you get so washed down by these reboots, and you get these fifth, sixth, seven saws. You get four or five uh, uh, paranormals in there. Yeah. They just kind of get in this uh, rhythm. It's like, let's just do something new. Yeah, and that's just... why, you know, you get a get out, you get a split, you right. get a hit. You can really appreciate those films. Obviously, they have a little bit more budget, but minus the budget, you can take away the budget from those films. They're still good films at the yeah. heart of it. So, ultimately, I think this film kind of fell flat for us both. Uh, again, and another thing, too, I guess for those that are diehard fans, you might appreciate this one. Yeah. I mean, we're fans to a degree. Like we said, we watch one and two. Don't like the third one, but... I think honestly, if you guys are new to the franchise, it would help to maybe see the first three because there are some interconnected. There's yeah. a connected. I will say I do like how they tried to connect all four films. I will yeah. give that, although it, again the, the storyline yeah. just wasn't strong enough. It yeah. just wasn't at all. But they did try to connect the films. Yeah. Um, as far as predictions and score, I I don't think that they should make any more, but I they think will. that they will. Yeah, this movie. Um, I think really they nice. have a way to do so. Um, and my score is going to be, are we on that? Or yeah, we're, yeah, go ahead. Gonna, Get out of five. Uh, one out of five. One out of five. So I don't it like is it. a terrible movie. I'm going to give it a two out of five. Like I said, I thought the, the beginning of the movie re- was really strong. Unfortunately, the rest of the movie kind of lost momentum. So I'm giving it a bad movie. Not terrible, but bad. Uh, and again, I think that this franchise is, is going to keep going. You know, I'm not going to yeah. say unfortunately because maybe someone else has a better spin, a yeah. better director. I would love if they would remake it and it actually be scary yeah. and make sense. Yeah. They kind of lost. Yeah, it, it just lost its there's a time loop in the in the movies that it just doesn't work for me. Yeah, and honestly too, we watched the, like I said, watched the DVD over the weekend. They they admittedly said after the first one they had an idea that they maybe yeah. want to make a franchise, but if if you, for those that are fans, there's a particular order of the films. You watch the films, and a lot of stuff just doesn't make sense. No, but any, at the end of the day, 
we weren't a fan of it. I would love to know what you guys thought of the yeah. film for those that saw it. Uh, those that are fans of the franchise, what you guys think of the film. Uh, as always, uh, definitely check us out on our social media account. Something to look out for. We're going to have our top 10 uh, movies from Morgan and I. We're both going to have five movies that we're super excited for. So we have the uh, most anticipated films of 2018 that we're going to do a video for you guys here soon. We're going to have another re uh, movie review coming out later this week for 12 Strong. Uh, and then just keep an eye out for all the stuff we got coming. So thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you guys again shortly. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that video, do us a favor, hit the thumbs up button as well as share this video. As always, subscribe to our channel, check out all of our reviews. We got our top 10 movies list from 2017 and we got 2018 coming up soon. So we got a lot of fun stuff for you guys. So definitely check out our channel. Again, we love you guys and we'll see you guys again soon.